Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Guitar Talk. I'm Mike Higgins, and I'll be your host. This is a show where we talk about guitars, music of many styles. Uh, we certainly have a fondness for the blues and American music, uh, but that doesn't rule out all sorts of interesting uh, music from around the world. If you've got an interesting instrument at home that you'd like to share with us, an old guitar, uh, reach out to me. We'd love to have you on the show where we could talk about it. But today we're talking about music that has been near and dear to my heart since the day I picked up a guitar in 1967, and that's the blues. Because without the blues, we don't have rock and roll. Without the blues, we don't have jazz. And all the other things that spawn from that seed, the blues. And there's fewer people today that really carry on the real blues, the real tradition. There's a lot of blues rock out there, and it's all good. It's all good music, but uh, we need folks that can really still carry that torch of the real stuff. Little Walter, Lightning Hopkins, Muddy Waters. This is the stuff. This is the stuff where it starts. I mean, if you want, you can go back, of course, to Charlie Patton and the real early guys, Mississippi John Hurt, one of my favorites. But today we have a guest uh, that was fortunate enough to be called on stage more than once with the one and only McKinley Morgan Field, Muddy Waters. And uh, he's often referred to that as his blues baptism. And I guess if you're going to get baptized in the blues, that's about the best it's going to ever get to have Muddy call you on stage. Uh, he's performed in Taunton quite a few times now over the last few years. Uh, but he's got two real great shows coming up here in town that we're going to talk about today. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to welcome back the undaunted Professor Hop. Oh, thanks, Mike. All right, man. Welcome, All right. welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, for the fans in town that haven't uh, had a chance to hear you yet, they're going to get two great shows coming up soon. Yeah, I call us, you know, we have to swing through Taunton. Swinging and taunting, no, no pun swinging, intended. Swinging through it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you've got, uh, you're going to be on the outdoors concerts yeah, on the Green uh, series. on the Green, uh, yeah, on the, the uh, 14th, I believe. 14th of, of July, uh, folks. July, Friday, 7 to 9. And then um, we'll swing back uh, in a little less than a week right to the sandbar. Excellent. On the 20th. We have a blues series every Thursday night my friends at the Sandbar Grill here in Taunton. And it's featuring the finest blues mm -hmm. you're gonna hear in the country. We're bringing in acts that are national acts, uh, in addition to all the regional stars. So you might wanna investigate that as well. Uh, so tell, share with the fans once again um, how you had the opportunity to get called on stage by Muddy. Oh yeah, <laughs> one of my favorite stories. Yeah. Yeah, you call it, uh Baptism, I call it, you know, losing my blues virginity. There you go. <laughs> because all I knew around uh, the area was, uh, before was just, you know, these kid bands trying to play blues rock, not the real stuff. Right. And, um, but, you know, for people who don't know the story, you know, and you can find it on my website. Where was the club, the first club? It was Paul's yeah. Mall. Oh, Lake the Great old Paul's, Paul's Mall in Boston. Yeah. Right. And a friend of mine knew uh, Muddy in the band for a while, you know. You know, he knew a lot of the guys, you know, like Al Perry from BCN. And they, they were all friends from, you know, childhood friends of my friend up in Lowell, a cat named Paul Dion. And um, he introduced me to Muddy backstage uh, one afternoon at a Sunday matinee. Oh, wow. Here I am with a whole bag full of unorganized harmonicas, a big jar of Vaseline. <laughs> I used to Vaseline in my lips. Uh, and, uh, you know, the usual uh, obligatory green bullet microphone. Yeah. You know, because I, I was in a situation where I wouldn't use any of other's, others' mics. And to this day, I still, you know, prefer using my own mics when I even go to, you know, go to what little jams I do go to now. Yep. Uh, and, or sit in, you know. I still prefer to use uh, my own, although a lot of times I will use uh, whoever's there's uh, mic. But anyway, long story short, I came in. I'm enjoying the show. After uh, my friend Paul introduced me to Muddy and said, blow some, blow some hop with you. 
you know, Muddy didn't say nothing. I'm enjoying the show. I'm sitting about from here to the monitor screen there and um, enjoying the show for well, two or three numbers and everything. And he had a Cracker Jack band then. Uh, Luther Guitar Jr. Johnson, Luther. Bob Margolin, um, Calvin Jones, Willie Smith, Pine Top Perkins. Wow. And uh, Jerry Portnoy just joined the band after Paul Osher. And, um, you know, well, we, um, you know, I, I listened, I was enjoying the music. All of a sudden, hey, where's the heart player? He points to me, you, come up. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What a feeling that must have been. Oh, man. I still when feel someone my, you I, love I, and it, idolize yeah, like right. that calls you up, it's, uh, it's just that moment in life where if, if you had a heart attack and dropped dead the next day, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, all yeah, it's all good. It's all good, you know. It's all good. Well, I, it's, um, I can still feel my ears burning. <laughs> I mean, talk about a couple of guitar men in that band too, huh? Oh yeah, and I mean Bob yeah, and Luther. Yeah. That covers a lot of ground. Well, right that was there. vindication for me. Yeah, I'll say vindication is a very beautiful lady. <laughs> and that's it, a good it, title for a blues song. Well, yeah, I think I'm gonna write one, you know, like that because um, um, a few years before, about two or three years before, I didn't really have much, you know, in, in the way of chops. Then, you know. And I tried to get, um, you know, playing with uh, Mark Golan's band called Freeborn Blues Band. And uh, didn't have the chops. I didn't have them. So, you know, got the ax. Come back later, kid, when you got the chops. Yep. So I came back and got to sit in. And my friend Paul <laughs> was praying, oh, God, I hope he doesn't screw up. That's awesome. <laughs> and then once I got it, switch, you know, it was, it was like um, almost cruise control. I mean, super speed, you know, just... Um, Grab the mic, put on the Vaseline, grab the right hop out of all those uh, unorganized hops. You grab the right, grab the right hop. You know, when you start going, it's like cruise control that after that. That was meant to be. So it's about a half a set, boom, you know? Absolutely. And very few mistakes. But that's where I learned about sharecropper of time. Everything isn't, you know, one, four, five, 12 bar. You know, that's why I learned where turnarounds can be put in. Anywhere. You know, any, anywhere, and you gotta be, yeah. be ready for it. Yeah. Learn that the hard way. My, a friend of mine played um, with the great John Lee Hooker for a while. He was part of his oh, band. Oh, yeah. Who was that? Jack Radcliffe. You oh, know, no, Jack. A friend of ours. Yeah, yeah, You've yeah, worked yeah. with Jack. Jack played with Hooker? I didn't know yep. that. Okay. And um, you needed to be paying attention. Oh, you, absolutely. You had to be laser focused on him. Cause, <laughs> laser I mean, and sonar and everything else. It's any key else. you want as long as it's in the key of E, of course. But it's, it, it's still yeah, never Yeah, but what to do with it? What you do with it. Yeah, yeah. But Hooker would turn it whenever, well, whenever right. he felt like that's it. That's right. And you got to be ready. You got to be ready or you're going to get the death stare. Oh, yeah, I, I got that. <laughs> you know, you know, it was with Muddy was trouble no more. They said Lightning was the same way. Oh, if yeah. you played well, with yeah. Lightning. You, you need, have to know those changes, you man. You got to know the changes. And again, like you just alluded to, it might not be 12 bars. That's it right. could be eight and a half. It could, could be, be 13. You just got to be out there, laser beam, yeah. sonar, you know, uh, you know, the whole bit, man. You, you got to be ready for it, you know. You Absolutely. just can't be up there, um, you know, thinking it's like, like a wind-up doll or, you know. You know, so, yeah, it, you know, that's, that opened my eyes. What I and he is. I mean, I, I love it when you hear people that know how to play in the traditional sense like yourself. It's still got all the the excitement and the power and that spirit that the early guys had and you're not relying on you know stacks of marshals and oh the, no <laughs> the hard rock mentality that seems to have bled oh, over no. into the blues oh, i mean i got no much. problem with yeah. with great guitar players i want to hear yeah. as many of them as i can yeah but right but the there's right a time tool for and a the place. right job there's a time and a place yeah. the right and tool for the right job that's my motto absolutely yeah. mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. So who who are you going to bring to Taunton with you? Who's going to be in the lineup for um, the concert on the green? Well, Tommy Williams, who you had on. Tom uh, Williams, yeah, yeah on, great on player. On show. Closest thing to Steve Cropper around these parts, really. Absolutely. Tommy Although I'll tell you a little story about Tommy. When we had that garage band called Mud when I was a drummer back oh, 47 odd years ago, we played, and he had this old sound amp. You know, that was the name of the amp sound. And, he, and I think he had a hollow body. 
and he got into a, a slow blues. I mean, it, it was in the Albert King groove, and I could have sworn it was Albert King. Wow. Yeah, Tom knows how to play. Yeah, that, you know, that guy can play. Yeah, you know, and, you know, just, just natural, you know, just boom. And he's know. so humble. You oh, know, yeah. that yeah. just makes him, to mm -hmm. me, all the more likable. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's a humble guy. He's not overly mm -hmm. flamboyant when he's playing on stage, mm -hmm. but yet when you listen to what's coming out of his amp, mm -hmm. you go, oh, that guy can play. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, oh, yeah. that's mm -hmm. really, really fantastic. But, so, Tom, you'll be in the band. Well, yeah, be well, I use, section. you know, like, I use, uh, I've been using different rhythm sections, you know, and uh, because it's, to my advantage to do so because uh, not enough rhythm sections around to really work the thing. So it's best to have people really know your stuff by doing a series of gigs. Yeah. So I I, I have kept it open ended, you know, right now. But uh, one show, it'll be uh, a rhythm section from around here, Jim Casey and Jim uh, Casey, great bass player. And uh, this guy named Al Clemens used to play with uh, Rick Russell. I've known him for a while playing drums. Yep. So we tried that for a while. Excellent. And then uh, a couple of guys, you know, I bring out here once in a while, you know, uh, when the money's worth it, um, from Western Massachusetts, Tom Terry, Jason Arnold. Ah, Jason Arnold's love to a hear them brother, R&B on uh, drums. He'll be at, they'll be the sandbar. Mm -hmm. So I've kept it, you know, relatively open-ended for that reason, you know. Sure. Until like, you know, and because it now behooves you work with me Doug to do so. Banks yeah, too. Doug Banks, yeah, Doug Banks. Yeah, good. Doug's yeah. a great player. Yeah. Mm -hmm. His son's no slouch either. No, no. I've, had, no. I've seen you uh, bring him down. up on stage. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. As a matter of yeah. fact, I think I was there playing, sitting in with you. Yeah, right, great, right. Great, we all great had a ball. Musicians. Yeah. Jim Casey too. So he made, he I, makes his own equipment. Well, yeah. Why? Well, oh yeah. He's got these Jim amplifiers bases, and bases, and guitars. There's a guy who knows you how know? to save a buck. <laughs> yeah, I guess you got that right. Make one do. You know? yeah, yeah, that's what it's all about. But I try because, you know, like um, from my experiences, you know, like, um, you know, the dearth of band, uh, work for a lot of bands and everything, you know, you've got to really uh, groom um, all kinds of rhythm sections. You know, I'm trying to see what they can do in it with this uh, rhythm section with these guys around here. Yeah. Casey and Al and do some things with them basically because um, see you know see which way that goes too you know and um, you know um, every one every one I you know have used you know I've learned from from each one you know? as it should be I noticed too like when you talk about blues you know you've got the whole the swing thing the Chicago style the marches. Um, mm -hmm. You, when you do a march, it's strong, and oh. I know you have a high expectation. Well, we got to go back to the section. barn ourselves. <laughs> you got to get yeah, back well. and do those marches. Well, because um, you know, without that, I mean, I've seen blues uh, guitar players and everything. Yeah, it's nice to be BB King. It's right. nice to be uh, Albert King. It's nice to be Freddie King. It's nice to be Otis Rush. That's King great. Day, That's yeah. fine, fine. But you got to know that low down stuff too. You know. I tell it even the black guys who, who play uh, blues guitar now. It's nice to play funk blues. Yeah. It's nice to play uh, the urban stuff, but you've got to know how to back up a harp player. You've got to know how to do that, you know, now. And uh, people have forgotten how to do that. You know, you, you know, like, you've got to know that Jimmy Reed stuff when you play uh, uh, Jimmy Reed, Lightning Hopkins, uh, you know, Guitar Gable stuff. That's where the heart of the march that, lies. That, that's that's where it lies, you know. I you agree. gotta have those drone fives. I'm I'm a bug on drone fives. And for those of in you rock out and there roll. Who, that Dude. don't know what that means, when you go in blues, there's a three chord progression that's widely used: the one, the four, and the five. And you can oversimplify it and think there's not a lot to it, but there really is much more to it than meets the eye. But the drone five, when you go to the five chord. You would leave the root note ringing. Yes. The root right. of the one. And you get that dissonance. That, and that, you get that dissonance yeah. when you go to the five chord. Yeah. So if you were in E, you'd go to A. And when you went up to the B, you just slide up right, one right. fret and yeah, leave yeah, that yeah. string right. ringing over. And, um, you know, to quote this cat who wrote about me one time, in, uh, he was from Rod, a cat named Kevin McCarthy, who is no slouch as a Jimmy Rogers, uh, Muddy Waters guitar player himself. 
you know, he's not exactly a slouch himself. Um, you know, that effect is more, very much like an electric hop or it's vibrato. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes your hair uh, stand on end and makes your face all tight, to quote Kevin. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's a and, uh, it changes the whole feel yeah, of the oh, song yeah, when you yeah, get it right. Yeah, I mean, you know, the old boogie rock and roll change is okay too, but it does nothing like drone fives. E and A and any other key you can do it in. Right. You I know? guess the two guys, that the, really the champions of that is probably Anson. Anson Funderburg and yep. Jimmy Vaughn. Yep. I mean, that's how, in that's today's how I music. Yeah, yeah today, you, listen, you, know, you know. But now up here, you got, you know, like Kid Bangham, uh, Monster Mike. Tommy Ferraro. Well, Ferraro, yeah. Ferraro's real good with those. Tommy Williams. I mean, you know. Neil. And, he, and each one. Neil, yeah. Neil uh, Vitula. Neil Mach is like young a maniac, Neil. yeah. Or middle-aged Neil now. <laughs> Neil. <laughs> you he ain't young. Uh, um, you know, I mean, um, that's the way. Uh, Mike uh, uh, Danalo. I mean, you know, those guys know how to do that stuff, and yeah. and it's, there's no substitute for it, none. And you watch the response to the audience. I mean, when the match has got the right groove, the right tempo, and it's played with the right accent and aggression, right? You it's got to be rude. It. People got to get on the dance floor. Yeah, but it's got to be rude. It. It's got to be rude. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you know, like, and even if you can play it down to the bridge, so it has has that percussive the bite. Uh, piano bite, you know then that's even better. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, why don't, why don't you uh, play a little something for us? Okay. Well, I'll do a couple of them. I'll do a little few bars from a, like a harmonica boogie, you know, so you can see that. Yep. Then I'm going to show my stock and trade, you know, like approximating an organ. I've heard you do that. <laughs> Didn't Jay Giles once think there was a B3 player <laughs> yeah, on, your, yeah, yeah, right. on was, your band stand? Or some kind of keyboard player. Yeah, yeah I ran into Jay one time while uh, we were playing... Uh, up in uh, Lemonster or Fitchburg, somewhere like that, you know, e uh, Eagles Place, I believe. And um, I, you know, stopped by, you know, dropped uh, off the stage for a drink, you know, and we have a break. And I come in, and, I, and Jay was up with his girlfriend, and uh, introduced himself, and you know, we reminisced about the old Boston Tea Party and the whole bit. Yeah. Where I learned, you know, a whole lot of stuff of seeing blues guys there. Like, you know, his band, George Smith, my biggest influence, and uh, Rod Piazza. Back when they were the Jay Giles blues, blues band. band. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, um, Jay, one of the great musicians we yeah, lost Yeah, and we're year. talking, and he was looking around, where's the keyboard player? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just used the Leslie effect, man. <laughs> well, folks, well, we're going to go to a public service announcement. When we come mm -hmm. back, you're going to hear what this man can do. So stick with us. We'll be right back.
<laughs> you know. Outstanding. That's the old fashioned way. But I like to, you know, I like to uh, approximate uh, a ham and organ sometime, you know, because they call it harmonica, a mouth organ anyway. So, just for the giggles and everything, I like to, you know, approximate like Peter Gunn. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, you just heard harmonica sounding pretty unique, and uh, it's a huge <coughs> sound. That uh, B3 approximation is well, excellent. At least the Korg, anyway. It must go a long way in a trio environment, too. Oh, yeah. It really gives an, a big, big sound across the front of the band. Oh, yeah. Well, bigger, you know, because, yeah. I mean, you already have a, you want to have a big sound anyway. Absolutely. What you got, but, you know, yeah, you know. So I know breaks it up. you talked a little bit earlier about uh, having your own microphone and stuff. A lot of the hot players obviously love the, the old green bullets. Um, but that's not what I see you use most of the time. Well. Uh, what do you got going there? Well, I right here I use a, a bulletini. A bulletini. Oh. Uh, like um, it's from uh, Blows Me Away Productions, you know, in Ca excuse me, in California. And that's, you know, uh, the first little torpedo mic I've used in a long while. Oh, it's got the sound. But I prefer, you know, I prefer a stick mic normally. Yeah. You know, like uh, the RE10, the Electro Voice of 15. Sure. Or plain old 57. I've got a uh, a 57 that was cut down and customized for me from, um, blows me away. Yeah. One of my old 57s. And I use that a lot. You know, just yeah. a, just a play, old... Sure, 57. Uh, I mean, because the mic, is, it's really an integral part of yeah. the sound that you're creating with the harmonica. Now, I, don't like to, I don't like to use what everybody uses it anyway. You That's know? right. I mean, you know, I, last time I said I used a little lunchbox amp. Those quilter yeah, amplifiers those are, great. are really, really outstanding. Uh, and they only weigh, you know, 19 pounds. Great, great amp for an old <laughs> guy, yeah. Yeah. I, I first heard one, of course, with uh, the great Ricky King Russell. Oh, yeah. Well, he got the idea he from me. He got the idea from you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah when I yeah. heard him playing out of it at Benjamin's Restaurant that mm -hmm. used to be over on Bay Street. I just kept looking around on the stage, where's the super reverb? Because yeah. I couldn't accept that the sound he was making was coming mm -hmm. out of mm -hmm. one of those. 
And when mm -hmm. I found out there was no tubes in it, I was even more flabbergasted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really fantastic sound. Great, big, huge, low end, plenty of top and mids. I mean, the sound you just had coming out of that was enormous. Yeah, that's even without an extension speaker. Right, right. Really great no, sound. I mean, you know, like I, I, I like, you know, I, I try to get a, a good sound of anything I use. Sometimes I just use a pedal board through uh, uh, a PA. Now I noticed you've and been doing do some duo work uh, with Tom Williams as oh, well yeah. as taking the band out. Oh yeah. Uh, lately, had to get as much work as you can nowadays. Absolutely. Do you change your set list a lot when you go out with just you and Tom? Not that much. I try to use some of the stuff, but you know, uh, you know. I still try to use you know as much as I can that I do with the band. Some stuff we might not be able to do because it's you know more arranged, but you know a yep. lot of times I try to do that. Yeah, fantastic. So he's the cool guy. I mean, you've been you guys have been together for a long time. You said since the '60s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. He's a bad man. Yeah, and he was playing. I know when I first heard about him he was the horn player for Vesuvius yeah yeah right right yeah we got yeah. to talk about that, that a little old bit when he was on the show yeah, yeah. uh yeah absolutely Tontoniano whatever yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 well yeah because you know who um do you hear any young guys coming along on hop in the last few years that have caught your attention that seem to carry on the tradition well um uh, funny you mentioned that because you know I was on Facebook with this young black kid um, cat named Isaiah Catlin. Yeah. He reminds me of me when I was 17 or 18 or 19. You know, but he had better chops. And I think I might have seen him down in Rhode Island, but I can't remember. Oh. Or heard of, you know, heard about him, you know. Yep. Because I think he was born in Rhode Island, but he's living in Georgia now. And he's, he shows some promise. There's another guy in, in, in uh, um, um, I believe uh, Virginia, Richmond, Virginia area, named yep. uh, Andrew Ali. And he's got a lot of little Walter stuff now. Another black dude, you know, young kid. Yeah. Well, he, you know, I, I mean, had little to say Walter. Kids. He wouldn't he be considered the guy? I mean, he put the amplifier on the map for harmonica. Well, pretty players. much. I mean, you know, uh, the, he's he's the most noted noted guy to do right. it. I mean, Sonny Boy Williamson, number two, they say he did for us. And then Snooky Pryor said Snooky he started Pryor. doing it when he was in the Army, started blowing through a PA. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, um, it could be a, a chicken and the egg thing. But Absolutely. I think Walter was, a, little Walter was the first guy to really um, get it really noticed. Well, folks, I hope you learned a little something this afternoon uh, about traditional blues. And I hope you enjoyed the sound of the undaunted Professor Hart. You'll yep. be able to see him at two big shows yep. here in Taunton this summer. He's going to be in the uh, series of Taunt Concerts on the Green. And he'll be over at our Thursday Night Blues series at the Baja Brothers Sandbar Grill. Yep. So come over and support that. Support live music in yep. any way you can, whenever you can. Right. So that guys like this can continue to do what they do best and bring the music to you. So thanks yeah, for being with us today. Go to www.professorharp.com. There it is. Thanks for being with us today. God bless you all. We'll see you soon. All right, cool.